Hello, Hello there. there. Welcome back to the second episode of season three of Star Wars in a Galaxy, the show where we watch as much Star Wars as we can get our hands on. I'm Eli. I'm Jacob. And yeah, we watched episodes 20 through 40 of Attack of the Clones. And this is an action-packed um, 20 minutes, I gotta say. It's pretty eventful. We got the space car chase. Yeah. I thought that was going to go a lot longer than it actually did. Yeah. We got a lot of uh, Anakin being a creep as well. Oh, man. All that so creepy. Coming up. So creepy. Okay. Um, let's get into some stuff. Um, so we have um, Anakin and Obi-Wan catching Zam, Wessel, Wazel, whatever it is. Um, and there's, I, I think there's some interesting dialogue here. Did you catch when Anakin said to Obi-Wan, uh, you're the closest thing I have to a father? Yeah, I think that kind of hits the nail on the head for what was being expressed through a lot of the movies. There's a lot of, the, I, I immediately thought of, of course, you are my brother, Anakin. Anakin, yeah, yeah. And I, and it, it, like, I reflected on the fact that Anakin never really had a father figure. Yeah. And that was kind of the problem, is that he never had someone, like, a truly good influence, but, like, like to look up to. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, uh, there's also that uh, funny line that is so, like, it's one of those lines that's so bad it's good. Um, why do I get the feeling you're going to be the death of me? Don't say that. It's like, that's really? like, oh, well, that's what Anakin says. Anakin says, don't say that right after. There's so much really funny dialogue in between Anakin and Obi-Wan. Like, I can't remember exactly which part. I can't remember if this was in this 20 minutes or last, uh, last, last week's segment, but I, I feel like I should bring it up anyway. When, um, Obi-Wan sa Anakin says, I can sense everything going on in that room. And then Obi-Wan says, oh, come now, your senses aren't that attuned. And Anakin says, yeah. Anakin says, and yours are? And Obi Wan says, "Possibly." <laughs> just, just find weird there. dialogue in here. Um, th there, um, and then we get to the into the um, into the nightclub, and this nightclub was interesting. I, I, there was a lot of cool details in there. Did you notice some stuff? Yeah, I noticed um, the pod racing. And, I noticed the pod racing too. I was just about to talk about the hot pod racing. Yeah, I didn't notice that. The, oh, the animal racing too, yeah. And we also get some cameos. Um, Ahmed Beck, a criminal played by Ahmed Best, like not in a mask. Oh yeah, the Jar Jar Binks actor. The Jar, and also he's a re relative. Ahmed Beck is a relative of Kellerin Beck, who's the Jedi Master on the Star Wars uh, show Jedi Temple Challenges on Star Wars Kids on YouTube. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, um, which has Ahmed Best as Keller and Beck. Um, I've watched, like, the first half of the first episode. I really want to get back on watching Jedi Temple Challenges. It looks really cool. What is the, what is the premise? Basically, it's, the, uh, it's, it's, like, these kids. They're, like, 10 or 11 years old, and they're competing um, to become, like, the best Jedi. And oh, wow. Ahmed Best is a Jedi master, and, like... <laughs> Um, let's see. Um, we also have, um, the infamous Ilan Sleesbagano. Um, that time you want to buy some death you sticks. You want to buy some death sticks? You don't want to sell me death sticks. Ah, His name is literally Sleesbagano. Oh, no, that's... Sleesbagano, yes. Yeah, that kind of hits the nail on the head, in my opinion. Um, and we also, there's one final cameo. We have Daniel Faitoni. Who's another criminal played by an uh, played by an unmasked Anthony Daniels? So we really wow! I did not notice that. Pretty critical I'm not detail. to admit that I didn't notice that. I only noticed it because of reference books and stuff like that. Um, yeah. uh, but I, I don't know if you noticed. Um, we got some. We got some pretty good memes in this. Um, we do. Yeah. Pick back up. There were there are a lot of ones. Impossible. Perhaps the archives are incomplete. It ought to be here, but it isn't. 
Um, we got the first one comes right here. Um, Jedi business. Go back to your drinks. Yeah. Did you notice? Um, I I was watching the shot of um Jango Fett after he hit Zam with the dart. Um, yes. We just saw him enough to see a vague bit of him. Yeah, just enough. You just saw the jetpack. You just saw a little bit of the blasting off. Yeah. Um. Also, um, so then we go to the Jedi Council. We get go to the uh, the Council Chambers, right? Um, I'm jumping around a little here. Tell me if you have anything else. But we go to the Jedi Council. We get another new Jedi. The biggest one I can can, can discern from that Council scene is the first ever canon appearance of Jedi Master Shock T. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that is That's a big. She's a pretty uh, yeah. important character, I would say. She'll be a major figure in the Clone Wars. Um, and also, you, so you know the thing with where Anakin is handling security and for Padme and Obi-Wan's handling the investigation? Um, yeah. That goes into poli- to, to, to the political aspect of the Jedi again. And I, th- I, I'm, I would be shocked if we had, didn't have some version of this conversation in the last, like, in the last episode or the last season of In a Galaxy, because this affects the Manta Menace too. But how yeah. do the Jedi work in politics? Yeah, like what are they? It, it's it's unclear. How do they interact with the not not the OT Jedi, not the sequel trilogy Jedi, the prequel trilogy Jedi? How do they interact with you know the law? Because it seems like it they it's very pick and choose like. They, it seems like they can bypass all the laws and just kind of yeah. like. Yeah, they have like special dispensation, I guess, because they're like, they say they're keepers of the peace, but they seem more like uh, super agents kind of like running around doing what they want, you know? I mean, the weirdest parallel I can think about this, believe it or not, is um, from The Incredibles. Yeah. Incredibles, they right. are held responsible for literally everything they do. And some things that they don't do. Yeah, and some things that they some don't do, they but like collateral damage. Jedi yeah. are just like, okay, let's do this, mind trick this person here, destroy this building yeah. over here, and they'll just handle it. Chop off a person's arm here, and leave the arm behind. They'll just, the, the authorities will just handle it, don't worry. Speaking of leaving things behind, I know this isn't in this part, but also I was a little disturbed, I forgot to mention it last time, by how Padme just left Corday behind on the landing pad. Like, no no one tended to her body or anything. No one even tried to rescue her. She just, she just lost, she was immediately, she just went, she went unresponsive for a little bit and she was, they were just immediately like, well, she's dead. No, no, no effort. There really isn't, like, what are they? How do burials work in the Star Wars galaxy? <laughs> that got dark, but like, how do burials? Yeah, yeah. that is really uh, interesting. They just left her. Well, no, when Qui Gon Jinn, I guess he gets um, he gets burned. Incarcerated, not incarcerated. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, I, cremated. I, I can't. cremated. Cremated, yes, cremated, not incarcerated. Yeah, no, no, no. It's it's it's, and you know, um, Anakin gets burned. Um, yep. Who else gets burned? Um, does Obi Wan? No, 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 no. Maul no, no. gets burned. Maul gets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Maul. Maul gets burned. But I think those are the only three cases. Does Luke? Does Luke get burned in uh in Legends? No, we don't actually know how Luke dies in Legends. It seems like for the Jedi, it seems like the wait. Even in Legends, we don't know how Luke dies. You know, in Legend, uh-huh. in, Le- in Legends, we know that Luke died before a certain point in time. But we don't know how Luke dies, or Leia, or Han. Really? Wow, that's an interesting choice by the. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. I think they probably would have done it, but like by the time they were getting to to Luke and Leia and their old uh, and and Han in their older age, you know, le- um, the Legends canon switch happened. That's true. Yeah. So they probably would have. So for wait for legends, were they actually writing through things in chronological order, or or mostly chronological? Kind of a little bit. Really, uh, with the That's... new Jedi Order, yes, but with the other stuff, they they just kind of bounced around with stuff. That makes sense. 
They, they after the movies, yes, with the stuff before, and then you get and and during, then it gets a little dicey. But um, let's see, this this twenty minutes, like I gotta say, it kind of made me hate the Jedi, which it was very uncomfortable for me because I'm a huge lover of the Jedi. But it kind of made me hate the Jedi. To be honest, it made me hate Anakin more, and it made me think the Jedi are more, and it made me like a- Anakin's not perfect, but the Jedi, there's some weird stuff in here. Um. Yoda, I don't know if you noticed, Yoda says in a conversation with uh, Obi-Wan and Mace Windu, before we get to that quote, actually, I just want to give an aside, how many conversations, walk and talk conversations in episodes two and three do Yoda, Mace Windu, and Obi-Wan have? Because there's like six or seven of them. They have a hell of walk and talk conversations. And so many shots of someone like stroking their chin or looking thinkily and then turning their head slowly. So much of that. The first walk and talk, he says that arrogance is, quote, a flaw more and more common among Jedi. He's right about that. He's right about that, but his mistake is that he just kind of says, yeah, that's a problem. And then, what do I mean? And, then, and then just doesn't do anything. I mean, Anakin is extremely arrogant. So I don't oh, absolutely, but that. like, you know... He, there's there's a there's a belief I think in the Jedi like if they're worthy they'll just kind of work it out among them among themselves. Yeah, because they be- they believe that everyone's good, but Anakin's not. Like Anakin's Anakin is such a piece of work in this movie. It's insane. He like honestly like there's a bunch of stuff that's just victim of circumstance at this point. But like he just does so like he's. So, like, when Padme ha- is angry about having to leave, he says sometimes we must let go of our pride and do what is requested of us, despite the fact that he can never, ever do that. So that seems hypo- that seems hypocritical to me. Wait, there's... He's, it's something that he wants to believe, but something that he actually doesn't believe. There's more, yeah. The other thing... I'm just going to go on a little bit of a rant here. He, um... He says this. He says the whole thing about how compa- lo- unconditional love is compassion. The Jedi are supposed to compassion to justify kind of flirting with Padme, even though I think he knows that's not true. He knows he's just playing around with words. Like he knows it's a stretch. And then he he says at one point, um, he just kind of has no respect, I guess, for Obi Wan. Not in like the oh respect your elders, but like he really like is very arrogant like he says um in, in, are you saying uh in some ways uh, is that the in some ways it's in some ways i'm ahead of in, he says in some ways in many ways in a lot of ways i'm ahead of him and I'm like where are you getting that <laughs> you are the padawan he is the master i know the whole padawans have a lot to teach their master thing but he's your master for a reason <laughs> yeah i i yeah. There's uh, also an interesting thing going back a little bit. Um did you notice that Pulp the did you notice the different reactions between Palpatine and Obi-Wan to Anakin's first like mission? Palpatine's like, you got this, you're ready, you're good. Obi-Wan's like, uh oh. It, it Obi-Wan's like, he's not ready, he's um it's and it's an interesting I think there's this whole there's a lot of masquerading in the prequel trilogy. Um and I think this is a good example. Of the whole, you know, the devil and angel on your shoulder thing? Yes. Obi-Wan looks like the devil because he's saying, oh, Anakin's not ready, but he's really just be, he's really the angel because he's being more cautious and he's like the side that thinks before it acts. Palpatine looks like the angel because he's, he looks like he's supportive and believes in Anakin. Yeah, but then he's, uh, he's actually the devil. Because then Anakin gets too headstrong, doesn't think about the consequences of his actions, and succumbs to rage and anger more. It's yeah, a weird that. masquerade sort of. And he, he lets himself be, like, taken under Palpatine's sway so easily. Because he has this, he already has the, he already has kind of, I guess, this complex where he doesn't want to respect authority. He, like, resents the Jedi. I think subconsciously he resents Obi-Wan a little bit. He was raised as a slave. Yeah. Yeah, so he doesn't, yeah, exactly. So, that that makes him, like, yeah, it's a, it's all, it's a mess, it's a whole mess. But, like, if I may, 
I want to quickly go back to something that we touched on in our last episode. What, what I, I thought about, I thought more about it, and I realized that Palpatine, I think, he knew what he was doing all along. He was so clever about it. Like he said, um, because when he, he insists that Obi, he basically insists that Obi-Wan serves as Padme's, like, guardian and escort, knowing that Anakin will come along. There's, um, there's also this thing in, um, what is it? Oh, yeah. Um, did you know what it, so when Anakin's ranting to Padme, um, that's so unprofessional. It's so, it, 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 and he's also really creepy. Um, he's such a creep. He's a, he, when he says "sorry, my lady," or when he says mm. "is the it's the number one reason why I hate Anakin in this movie." It's that so, sorry, my lady. It's so it sends that's shivers like, uh, down my spine. Uh, uh, and really, and like, there's so many things where like there's so many meme worthy moments because. It's this weird vacillation between, like, when she says, you'll always be that little boy on I knew on Tatooine. Fast forward three years, they're having a baby together. <laughs> like, hold up. If he if she sees him as a kid still, how does she fall in love with him? And it's it, it weird to say, go between, like, he think, oh, this being like, oh, Annie, you're all grown up. And then being like, whoa. I mean, it is a little bit of the setup of the Phantom Menace, but it's also the execution of the Attack of the Clones. Um, but yeah, uh, there's but the, even when the acting is like there's there's always I feel like and this is me like the appreciating everything part of me. Um, there's always a part I can like, for example, when uh, Anakin when Padme says to Anakin. Uh, don't grow up too fast. Yeah. He's sitting down and she's looking down on him. Yeah, that's like symbol. Yeah, symbolic. Yeah. But but when he says, "But I am grown up," he sh- he's he's towering over her. But talk about man, Jango Fett. Talk about perfect timing, man. Oh, that is perfect. One hundred percent perfect timing. I mean, I expect nothing less from Jango Fett, but still. Yeah, that's just like, what are the odds of that, bro? <laughs> I mean, I think he was monitoring the situation the entire time. Oh, undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. He probably had, like, a little microphone in his camera, so he was like, he definitely knew. But it was interesting how, like, intense Anakin got. Like, the signs are everywhere. This, the Obi-Wan, in retrospect, Obi-Wan completely just looks the other way. Like, there's some quote in, um, I think one of the novelizations that says like I per- is so they like I pretended Obi Wan didn't know Obi Wan pretended that he didn't know. I think that was about Padme, but still, yeah. Good. Um, then we go. No, then no, Obi Wan no. meanders over to uh, Dex's place, Dexter Jetster. I think this is a good scene. Um, not bad <laughs> acting. <laughs> See, when it's just you and McGregor, like, it's not bad, you know? Uh-huh. And even the guy who was voicing uh, Dex, let's see who that is. Ron Falk. He did a, he did a pretty good job. Um, There's just one thing about that scene that bugs me. What? How is the diner more popping than the club that they were just in? The diner has more music and is so much more lively and energetic. Everyone in the everyone in the club just looks like they're not not having a good time, you know. But then everyone in that diner is just living it up. I think the I the reason I can think of really is that the 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 club is more low profile. You know, it's on a lower level of Coruscant, and so it's by proxy for people who want to keep a little bit of a lower uh, profile. Remember the two cameos, they're criminals. They're not just, like, people. They're cr- they are specifically referenced as criminals. D- I don't know. There are some weird throwaway lines in here that actually kind of are weirdly thought-provoking. For example, um, I don't know if you caught this one, but um, the uh, Obi-Wan and Dex are talking about the effectiveness of robotic scanning systems. 
And Obi-Wan says, uh, well, if droids could think, there'd be none of us here, would there? Uh, and so Obi-Wan's implying the droids can't think, but literally every other, every, like, appearance of a main character droid in a Star Wars anything has seemed to imply otherwise. Oh, that is a very good point. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's a very good point. By the way, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to ask this uh, question specifically, but if we do another episode of Star Wars Opinions, this would be like at the top of the list for questions I'd consider. Can droids think? Mm-hmm. By the way, we should totally do another episode of Star Wars Opinions. Um, we should, yeah. What else? Um, oh, yeah. Then Obi-Wan goes to Madame Jocasta. She is, she is, she is so obnoxious. She, she straight up says, if it doesn't show up in our archives, it doesn't exist. Like, that's not the Jedi art, that's not the Jedi attitude. Like, what? And also, like, here's the thing. What was Master Yoda saying earlier about arrogance? Quote, even some of our older, more experienced members would do well to remember it or something like that. Exhibit A. Yes. Also, apparently in source books, I remember reading this, basically it was said that uh, Madame Jocasta's memory is, quote, as extensive as the archives, basically. like. But she doesn't, but she's not familiar with Camino. That's what I was about to say. Even if it was erased from Camino, it was in there a lot longer than it, like, you know, if Dooku, even if Dooku erased it, Madame Jocasta isn't exactly young, and so she's been in that archive for a long time. Even if it was deleted, you'd think she'd still remember it. It's a strange predicament, um, but I won't think too much um, into it. And then um, there's there's also you're talking about um, the whole. Uh, so you might say that we are encouraged to love. That 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 is complete. Yeah. That is hogwash. But then she. But then he says, um, and even like maybe one of the most cringy lines in this whole thing. You're exactly the way I remember you in my dreams. Yeah, that was like, okay, Padme, get out of there. Request request a transfer. Like, trade him in. Like, get a different escort. You don't need this man. Yeah. There's there's even um a scene in I'm gonna reference this one this again we referenced in the last episode and it's in the description of the last episode the uh, attack of the clones how it should have ended um hey yeah. can I get a different Jedi this one keeps giving me I want you eyes no I wasn't yeah that's exactly right <laughs> I love that how it should that how it should have ended is great because this movie is so questionable yeah. um. Uh, I found myself enjoying it a lot more than I did the last time, to be honest. Actually, Uh, me too, for some weird reason. Me too. Um, I felt like I had more appreciation for it. And I'm not going to go on, I'm not going to go on some of all these movies are come underrated cinematic masterpieces because they're not, they're not masterpieces, but they're fine. Like, I don't know. They're bad, but they're not, they're, they're, I don't know. Yeah. There's some scenes that are just terrible. There are some scenes that are actually quite good. Now, the the terrible scenes went out because they're just, like, that cringy. But there, that doesn't mean there aren't not, like... That doesn't mean there aren't good scenes in here. There are. Um, one of the interesting ones... I think this scene was, like, maybe one of the... Maybe the best in this um, s- uh, sequence that we watched. Um, when Obi-Wan visits Yoda and the Jedi Younglings... Um, and we also get one of my favorite Yoda jokes by far. Um, Lost the planet Master Obi-Wan has. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. I think that's part of, I think that kind of shows a little bit of like the culture of like what's wrong with the Jedi a little bit. In fact, in the way that they're like not supposed to show or like admit when they don't know something. And I think that, I guess it's kind of a stretch, but I feel like that might have that sort of mindset that was portrayed there could be indicative of some of their problems. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's a stretch. Yeah, I was actually thinking of it. The, the, I think the most problematic thing in 
in this whole thing is when Obi-Wan walks in, Yoda is coaching the Jedi with their training sabers, um, and he says, use your feelings, you much, you must. And I'm like, now you want them to use your, their feelings? When is it acceptable for a Jedi to use their feelings? It doesn't make a lot of sense. They're supposed to have compassion, but not attachment, which is, in my view, kind of impossible. There's a, the Jedi and their view on attachment and their the Jedi and their view on a human emotion and feelings is has a it's not it's not a line like some people think it is. It's a very gray area. They're not yeah. really sure how they feel about it. I think they are. They just they don't understand how it like makes some people feel kind of they don't understand like I don't know. It is just kind of yeah, it is what it is. I think the lesson that Yoda gives the younglings, at least in my opinion, is I think the best one he gives to anyone in the prequel trilogy. Um, I think one of the lessons that Obi that Yoda's trying to give is that failure is a good teacher. Is no like it's it's kind of like it happens. Um, and it's time, and, and that kind of lesson ties into, I know you're going to dislike that I'm saying this, The Last Jedi, um, with, with Yoda's, uh, talk with Luke, failure as a greatest yeah. teacher is, um, you, you know, you, you failed, you failed Ben once, but you still have the chance to succeed with Rey, um, and there's also this whole thing, like, it's connecting it back to the prequel trilogy, you know, um, even powerful Jedi like you know Master Obi Wan, as he calls uh, Kenobi, aren't infallible. Aren't infallible. They make mistakes. They overlook things. They lose planets. It happens. Yeah. Um. Uh, it's 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 an interesting lesson and one I enjoy. I have one final thought about Attack of the Clones, but first, do you have any more thoughts, Jacob? Um, yeah, I have a lot. Um, I, I have to say it was very different. I kind of appreciated the visuals more the second time around from the, uh, this Pad Padme's spaceship to Naboo. I know we're saving that a little bit for next time, but the first few minutes of Naboo were pretty nice, big, luscious clouds. Next time, because it tied better into the stuff next time than now, because, you know, we only got a minute for it. Right, go on. Yeah. But Anakin is just... Yeah, Anakin is a real, a real creep. No other way to, uh, to put it. I think. Um, yeah, but overall, oh, oh yeah, why, in the heck, did Padme decide that she would use Jar Jar? I wrote a note about that. I was going to reference it. Jar Jar. Why Jar Jar? He doesn't appear to have any kind of formal senatorial grade education. It's he's kind of just like some random person that they picked up because they felt bad for him. There's a reference. To, um, there's another. Uh, how should I mean the thing? Jar Jar. I know you want this responsibility, but I'm going to pick like literally any other person qualified. And then if you remember, Jar Jar walks in front of a window and Django Fett shoots him. Yeah. It's. That how it should have ended. As much this time around. I, but seriously, though, Jar Jar that, in, in the Senate. Yeah. Uh, it's the uh, and finally there was one other thought I had. Okay, so by the movie canon, ignoring any out of movie sources, we have no idea who erased Camino from the Jedi archives. From out of yeah. movie sources, we know it was Dooku. But we never really, like, there's never a concrete answer that at least I know about why. The Sith wanted the Jedi to come discover Kamino. Maybe they thought that if they erased it, they, it would make the Jedi more likely to go there. Like, the Jedi are really getting, the Jedi are really getting played. I think that's part of what we need to understand is, like, the plot goes deep. Your your explanation is good. My I had a less satisfying explanation, which is that maybe they erased it because they wanted the Jedi to go to the to Kamino on their terms. Yes, no, yes, you're exactly right. It's like 
it's like the movie Inception. It's like you want something to happen, but you have to make the per- like you want the person to do something, but you have to make them think that it's their idea. That's exactly what Palpatine is doing because he's such a master like manipulator that he can do that. Yeah, you know? he definitely can do that, and it's not going to be a problem at all. Um, I think that is going to be it um, for this episode of Star Wars in a Galaxy. Um, all right. Yeah. Make sure to do all the stuff. Subscribe to us on Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, um, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, if I didn't mention it already. What else? Um, of course, we have, a, we have a Reddit, r slash Star Wars in a Galaxy. 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 Um, we have, Go for uh, that for uh, we have a Twitter that. account, um, which is at in a Galaxy cast. Um, all that good stuff. Um, next week we'll be doing 40 to 60 minutes of Attack of the Clones, and then the week after that, the week after that, we I will be chal- challenging Jacob to some Star Wars trivia. Winner picks the topic of our next special episode. I'm hyped for that. Um, Let's go. Yep. So, um, I guess, may the Force be with you, always. See you next time.